Okay, how's it going guys? Um, I just decided to make a new video because I know that a lot of people, especially in the reptile community, work with tarantulas, but I've seen a lot of problems with people who work with reptiles not knowing how to properly ship tarantulas. So I'm going to be making a instructional video to help you guys pack tarantulas properly so that you don't injure them in the shipping process because believe it or not, tarantulas are actually pretty fragile. Um, so this is just a quick instructional video to show you how I pack tarantulas and I've packed and shipped out tarantulas pretty much all around the US. I've never had any casualties or anything like that. So uh, this is just a quick video to give you the ins and outs of what I do to ship tarantulas. Okay. So, um, one of the first things that's kind of very important when shipping tarantulas is the box you use. You want to use something that's sturdy. Uh, if you go to Target or uh, another store like that that has shipping supplies, uh, you can get boxes for like a dollar, twenty-five ish maybe up to four dollars for a larger box. Um, and then you want to go to some place like Target sells it, but uh, I found that Home Depot sells uh, foam like this. Sorry, not foam. Styrofoam. And you want to make sure that you have a styrofoam lining for the box. It helps protect against temperatures as well as from the box crushing. Um, and it helps if, if the box gets jabbed or whatever, it helps give a little bit more protection to the animal inside. So you want to make sure that when you get a box, make sure it's nice and sturdy. And then have a lining like this on the inside. And typically you want to have also a piece of styrofoam to go over the top. It fits in snugly so that it keeps the animal nice and safe. Uh, a lot of people will take a screwdriver as well and go through the sides on one side and the other just to get a little bit of airflow in there. With tarantulas, uh, they don't use up quite as much oxygen as uh, other types of animals do. So it's not completely necessary, but it's a good thing to do uh, if you are going to be shipping them today or etc. Okay, so for the actual packaging for the tarantula, the, the container the tarantula will be in, uh, you want to pick something that's appropriately sized for the tarantula. If you have an adult tarantula, you want to ship them in something like this. Uh, it's got enough room so that you'll have the packing and to safely have the tarantula. For the smaller ones, you can use uh, vials or uh, different other containers, Tupperware, things like that. Um, but basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to need a roll of paper towels, a little bit of water, and the container that you're going to use. I'll just do this one. Let's say you're shipping a terrestrial tarantula. You just want to take the sheets of paper towel, fold them up to create sort of like a, a padded area. Just take them, just keep doing that. I usually like to do uh, one or two layers on the bottom so that the tarantula itself, uh, the area that it's resting on, has got enough padding and then a couple on the walls as well. But basically I'm just folding up the paper towels. I mean, I suppose you can use napkins as well. Uh, I like to use paper towels. Gives it a nice bit of padding. And for the terrestrial ones, it's especially important for the terrestrial tarantulas, this terrestrial species, that you make sure that it's got enough padding and enough uh, buffering because while they're being shipped they're going to get jostled around and um, especially the terrestrials are really susceptible uh, for abdomens rupturing, and that's basically what you're trying to prevent is uh, any rupturing of the abdomen or damaging to the tarantula itself. So, the more padding while still having room for the tarantula, the, be the better. So basically what you want to do is create like a little area in there for the tarantula. A little close so you guys can see. It's just got a little area for the tarantula. So what you would do is you get the tarantula put it in the area. Actually, before you do that, you'd want to wet it down a little bit so it creates a little bit more cushioning. Um, get the tarantula, put it in there, and then you'd want to get another piece of paper towel and basically just fold it up so that it would fit over the top like that. 
You make sure you want to make sure you're not crushing the tarantula, but it doesn't have a whole lot of room to move around and get jostled around. It wants to have nice and cushioned area, and then enough area so that you can put the lid on. And basically, that's going to protect the tarantula. So when you're shipping it around, or when you put it in the shipping box, if it gets jostled or tossed around or whatever, um, that it's going to be padded and protected. So when the person gets it tarantulas should be safe inside and that's the method that I've used and I've shipped out all different size tarantulas from little slings up to full-grown adults um, and that is the best way that I found to do it okay uh, so for shipping out the slings I do the same thing with the uh, paper towels but you're just gonna do it on a smaller scale rip the paper towel down into smaller pieces fold it up get a little padding on the bottom And the more you practice doing this, the easier it gets. Um, it's, it's not really that hard once you get used to it and you know what you're doing. Um, and it's really the best way to safely pack tarantulas to get them shipped to where they need to go. Um, for the terrest or for, sorry, for the arboreals and for the slings, I usually do make a, the paper towels into an X on the bottom. Just so they cross over each other, it gives a little bit of extra padding. And then for the rest of it, the rest of the uh, container, I take it and I fold them into long strips like this and then just press it down in so that it creates kind of like a, a burrow almost. And a lot of the times the arboreal tarantulas, if you get them to the edge of their container um, and give them the option of going into a little small tight little burrow, they'll go right in there. So you can see, creates a nice little burrow. And you just want to make sure that it's got padding in all the areas so that the tarantula isn't exposed to the hard uh, area for of the plastic. And then just put a, little, a couple drops of water in there to add, create the cushioning a little bit better. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'll actually package up some tarantulas so that you guys can see how well this works. Um, you can see exactly how I get the tarantulas into the little areas and then what it looks like all put together. Okay, one last uh, little thing is if you're ever shipping a very, very small tarantula sling, a uh, little baby tarantula, uh, most people use the straw method and I found that is actually the most effective way to uh, ship the babies. So what you do is you take a straw. I like the McDonald's straws because they're a little bit thicker, gives you a little bit more room to work with. Um, what you want to do is cut it just a few inches down. Just hold that so that, there we go. So you get a little section of straw. And then you take a piece of paper towel, like such. And you fold it, fold it, and you basically are going to take it and twist it. So it creates kind of like a plug. A fat little plug. And then you just put that in the end of the straw. Then, yeah, the tough part really is getting the tarantula to go into that end of the straw. Um, I get found that if you get them out into an open area, uh, give them the option of going into a, a small hiding area and they typically will go in there. Um, if not, I usually use my hands, put them in there and then direct and just blow gently and they'll go down into it. The, um, then once you have them in there, typically they don't turn around so you have a little bit of time to grab another piece of paper towel, create another little plug and then stick it right in the end so that the tarantula is actually in between the two pieces of paper towel in here and it's got enough cushion with the straw that it should be fine during shipping. And then you want to make sure that that straw is actually secured so you either want to tape it into another container like this uh, that's also packed with paper towels or you want to make sure that it's secured so that it's not being jostled around the box where the ends could come off or um, where it could get crushed potentially. So that's the best way I found it works to ship the very small slings. Okay, so I'm just going to illustrate what I usually do uh, for shipping the tarantulas. Now I already showed you how to make the little uh, paper towel area inside of the container and you just get the tarantula, gently direct them into the container. You want them to have a little bit of room but not a lot and then you would just take the lid, sorry, just take the top, 
area paper towel, press it on there, and then, boom, take the uh, lid for the container, make sure that it's secured tightly. Uh, typically, I do put tape around the edges um, just to make sure it's secured. And the tarantula is in here, and with the regular jostling around uh, that you would get through shipping, it would be perfectly fine if you were to ship it like this. Um, and then what you would want to do is take your take your insulated box, put the container in there, and you can either use crushed up newspaper, um, packing peanuts. Um, I like to use the stuffing that they use for like pillows and things like that. Uh, stuff it in there. You want it to be pretty securely inside there so it can move around a little bit. But again, the main object is not to get it to move around too much um, so that the tarantula doesn't get jostled around quite so much. And seal it up either overnight shipping or typically since tarantulas don't need too much oxygen, they do pretty well with most temperatures. Uh, two day shipping is okay for uh, shipping tarantulas typically. Uh, if you're in the extreme ranges for cold or hot, I uh, definitely don't suggest it. Uh, especially if you're on the hot range because tarantulas have exoskeletons, uh, they cook rather easily. So if you are in an area that's very warm or hot, or you're shipping it to some place that's hot, I would not suggest uh, shipping them or if you think it's a little too warm even I'd suggest using a, um, a cool pack in the packaging. Okay um, I'm just going to illustrate how to get the tarantula into one of these size containers. Hopefully this one will cooperate. Um, typically I use something like a, a pencil or a pen or even uh, a lot of people use paint brushes so that if the tarantula decides to bite it, it isn't, uh, doesn't damage the fangs. Typically I don't get a lot of striking action, but if you look, uh, I usually just line up the container with the uh, tarantula, the, the edge of its container. See if I can get it to move around. Direct it up. And you'll see, once it finds a little burrow, boom, right there, in it goes. Climbs right down into the bottom. And what you do, take a piece of paper towel, fold it into a little square, place it on top. Uh, if it's got a lot of room like this one does, I do another one. Just a little messy pad, just so that you got a secure area for shipping. Pop the top on top of it. Again, I'd probably do the tape around it, and inside that, it's safe. You could probably drop this, roll it off the table, whatever, and the tarantula is going to be perfectly fine. And that's typically what you would do for shipping. Okay, I'm going to attempt to show you how to get a really small sling into a straw. Might not go that well. We'll see how it goes. Um, but in here, we've got Lassidora parhibana, a salmon pink bird eater, pretty small sling. I'm just going to direct it up the container. And now it's on my hand. It's a little guy. Are we in a real pain about it? What I usually do is get him in my hand. to my hand, try and get it towards the center so I can curl my hand up. Nope, too fast. Okay, and then you give it only one little option, a little hole to get out of, and then blow in the other end. And I don't know if it's going to pick it up in there. Might not, but the tarantula is in there. And then you just take the other end of the plug, stick it in, 
Uh, a lot of people wet it just so that it expands, the paper expands and creates a nice little suction on it. But the tarantula is in there. And then when the person gets it, they can pull out the ends and uh, get your tarantula. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you guys have any other requests for videos, let me know. Um, I hope this is informative so that people can start shipping tarantulas more accurately and uh, have better results without damaging the animals. And, uh, and people will have a lot more success dealing with tarantulas. Thanks, guys.